joined today by the Senate Minority Leader, Tony Bucco, as well as Budget Officer Declan O'Scanlan. So, Senators, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. It's great for being here. Well, we're doing all things budget today, and I know this opens a uh, multi-month season for all of you, um, and a lot of hard work will be going on. Senator Bucco, in anticipation of um, the budget address that you're about to hear, um, you released a pretty strongly worded statement. So why don't you talk a little bit about your expectations? Well, I think the governor is going to come out and paint this rosy picture. And, um, and he'll do that in terms of spinning his message. But the facts are is that this budget spends 3% more than last year. The administration continues, continues this aggressive spending model. There's going to be a structural deficit of about $2 billion in this budget. There'll be tax increases for all individuals across the state of New Jersey. So the fact that they want to say that it's going to be more affordable to folks I, is not reality. They can say what they want, but the fact of the matter is, is that we're going to continue to have the highest property taxes in the nation. People are going to continue to suffer under bracket creep, tax bracket creep, paying more and getting less. You know, I don't care how you spin it. That's the bottom line in this budget. You know, you're still going to see a 15% fare hike on New Jersey Transit. Toll, road, toll roads are still going up. Um, you know, just, we're going to 140 schools are going to lose um, are going to lose funding. So, how many children does that impact, and what does that do to the tax rate? Right. So, I think you know we're we're in for a rocky road. Well, you covered a lot there, so I want to go back and talk about a couple of those things with with both of you. But let me start with you on the uh, tax increases that you mentioned. You, you, I think, are familiar with a report we just released uh, last week from GSI, and we tried to translate what is Trenton speak right into what does that really mean to me, right, as a resident or a, somebody who operates a business, in order to close the gap that is really going to grow to more like five billion, we think, in the two years. You have to raise income taxes on families down to a hundred thousand. You know, not the. Um, you know, the high tax brackets that we are fond of talking about, or sales tax, right, would have to escalate at a much faster level than 7%, probably more like 9%. And then, of course, corporations, um, it seems like, are going to endure a substantially higher tax increase on them. So there's implications to all of this, and one of which is, of course, we're seeing lower revenues this year than we had the prior year, which I think, besides 2008, might be the first time that that may have occurred. So what do, would you like to see from a spending perspective? If you cannot keep raising the revenues, what would you like to see from a spending perspective? Well, I think we've got to look at the overall budget. And I think that um, reoccurring expenses need to start being paid with reoccurring revenue, mm. right? I mean, we can't spend what we don't have. You know, Jersey doesn't have a revenue problem. We've got a spending problem. We've had it for years. And every year the budget goes up and up and up. I mean, this budget is up over 60% from the time the governor took office. I mean, you cannot continue at that pace without hitting a brick wall. And if it wasn't for the pandemic money from the federal government, we would have been there long ago. Yeah. But the last couple of budgets have been propped up by the, by the pandemic money. And now that money is starting to wane away and we're gonna get back to reality. Well, let's talk about the budget a little bit more, uh, Senator O'Scanlan, with you. You know, as um, the Senator was referencing, we had an expected $8 billion surplus um, in the current year's budget. I'm not sure if you think that that's really going to play out or not. And um, I guess, what are your expectations of the budget committee and, you know, what the public can expect to, you know, hear from why we should support, you know, the, the current proposal that's going to be put on the table? Well, you might hear that from Democrats on the Budget Committee. Republicans are going to say, don't support this. Support a sound and reasonable holistic plan to get us to fiscal solvency on a long-term uh, footing from Republicans on the Budget Committee. They should support that. Uh, and as Tony mentioned, we've, uh, since the governor was elected, we're over 60% increase in, in spending now, over 50% increase in, in revenue and taxes. Right there, you've gotten a balance. That can't go on forever. And we're starting to see that come back to haunt us. Uh, we did build a, an $8 billion surplus last year, which may or may not at the end of this year be, be exactly that. But uh, we're projecting a just over $6 billion uh, surplus at the end of this year. Well, that's a $2 billion spend, a quarter of our surplus in one year, in what are relatively good times. Uh, if, if that's the case in relatively good times, uh, GSI's predictions about 
a $5 billion or seven, or three to seven, I think you had it, uh, over this next five year period. That is a disaster and your, your uh, surplus goes away very quickly. If you have a multi-billion dollar structural deficit, uh, I don't care how big your surplus is, it's gonna evaporate very quickly, especially if you have a downturn, a real downturn in revenues. It's stunning. So the public shouldn't support this sort of pie in the sky budget. Uh, they should support something much more practical and reasonable. Um, I've already heard a Democrat talk about uh, Republicans are gloom and doom. No, we're not. We are, we are honest and practical. Uh, and the public should support that method of government uh, and budgeting. Uh, and they should look to Republicans to do And we have. We've put out, and, and you've looked at our plans, and they, they've included some, some input for, from you guys. Uh, we put detailed plans out for a holistic plan to get us back on firm fiscal footing. As Tony mentioned, this administration has been really lucky. The pandemic, for all the horrible things about it, was a real stroke of luck for this administration. Uh, the fiscally. Previous, the previous, fiscally. Fiscally. Yeah. Yeah. The previous administration, we, we didn't get a break uh, fiscally. We would hope we'd get one, but uh, but put us on a much better footing, actually, after going through the hell that we went through in 08, 09. This administration has uh, not made any progress at all. It is really the administration missed opportunities. With all of this breathing room we had with federal money, un unneeded borrowed money, we really had the opportunity to fix our budget, and that's been squandered, and that's unfortunate. Well, and, and not, I would say, not just you know, the budget itself, but there's other pressures on you know, the residences, and we're gonna talk about transit in just one minute. But there's also to fix in the government. You and I always talked about this when we were in office together, yeah. right? That things like, like division of motor vehicles, right? And mm -hmm. how it, it exposed, the pandemic exposed the frailty and the non-customer oriented, my words, non-customer oriented you know, approach that they've got. Unemployment continues to it today. Missed opportunity in terms of IT infrastructure, right? Which n doesn't have a constituency until it breaks. Yep. Right? And you talk a lot about that. And, and that was part of the Republican plan. Yep. Our, our plan wasn't you know, for sound bites. It was a holistic plan. It still is. It's out there. It should be enacted. Uh, but it took in, into account investments in, in MVC infrastructure, unemployment infrastructure, uh, IT across the board. I mean, it's, you know, uh, we're, I think we're still using Casio calculators in, in back in the, the Treasury Department. Uh, we could have fixed almost all that, right. uh, and we haven't. Right. Well, and the budget officer raises a great point, right? Um, there are a whole host of things that are out there that are troubling, right? When you look at New Jersey's unemployment rate, right? We're higher than the mm -hmm. national average. When you look at the number of folks coming into the state, we're lower than most other states. So, you know, these are all indications that things aren't as rosy as the governor would try to make people to believe. So we have to do something. You know, we have to make it affordable for people to want to be here and stay here. Another stressor, of course, you know, you mentioned it before, Senator, was um, the cost of transportation, which is, you know, a strategic advantage, right, for the state of New Jersey. And now we're driving up the cost of both transit as well as tolls, which are the two, two primary transportation modes and affect, of course, all the residents. Um, will you be having hearings or will the transit come before you in the budget committee? And will you be talking to them about what their plan is? They will come. Uh, along with the DOT, the transit comes in. So we're going to have a lot of, we're going to have a lengthy discussion about the proposal to, to increase fares. Uh, look, you have to run these systems. You have to get money to run them somewhere. Republicans make the argument that government across the board hasn't spent much time figuring out where we're wasting money and how we can do things more efficiently. Yeah. That should be item one before you go and ask people for more money. Uh, that is not how New Jersey government's been run in a long time. I uh, somewhat under the Christie administration, I'll give a tip of the hat there, uh, but certainly not this administration. We haven't seen that. Uh, so uh, that has to be considered. There's going to be some tough questions yeah. along those lines. These are extraordinarily regressive actions, too. The people using transit, the people, you know, everyone pays the same registration. The guy making, you know, half a million dollars and the guy making, you know, $35,000. Uh, so these things are regressive. Uh, and, and before you do go, and increase those, those regressive fees and taxes, uh, you ought to be, with some credibility, be able to look the public in the eye and say, we've done all we can. Right. And if you start to price these services out of the market, 
then what happens? People take back to the roads, which right. causes our roads to deteriorate, creates traffic. So, you know, there really needs to be a balance here uh, so that people can utilize our transportation systems. And from a, a leadership perspective, Senator, I know you've experienced some turnover in the legislature and um, new members. I shouldn't say turnover. Really, it's more new members mm -hmm. coming in. Uh, more in the Assembly, of course, in the Senate, but of course it affects your ability and you've done a great job in terms of providing the leadership um, for the caucus. Hence, you know, both your multi-point plan as well as your statement leading into the budget address. So um, how has it been different at all for you this year? Um, and I, I bring that up because last year everybody was on the, on the ballot, right? Uh, both sides of the house. This year, nobody in the legislature is on the, on, the, on the ballot. Is there a different dynamic going on this year? No, I think everybody's focused. We, you know, I've said this a hundred times. We have a talented caucus. Everybody comes with a different perspective. You know, uh, they come from different areas. So the folks that we have in the Republican Senate caucus are talented. And, um, and I've tried to use those talents in the areas in which they fit. And, um, and I think we've done a great job at putting out um, some, some different approaches to things that potentially would have saved the state a lot of money. You know, we did it with, when you look at the debt defeasance, right? Governor was champion this paying down of the debt. But essentially what he did was pay down some of the debt that would have been paid down all, this year already and some of the low interest rate debt. If he would have pushed some of that money to other higher interest rate debt and cleaned that out, you know, state could have saved, you know, up to, I think, a billion dollars more in revenue. So it's things like that, that when you take a look at the difference, that's why, you know, we've been calling for a bipartisan budget approach, right? Say more about that. Well, listen, I, you know, we want to have a seat at the table. We've proven over time that our suggestions and the policy proposals that we've given over time uh, have been correct and would have saved money and could have, things could have been done differently. But when you have a one party system ruling the front office and the state house, you never get that other perspective, right? People understand that. If you have one person in a room thinking, the thought process is one way. Add three people to the room, and all of a sudden you may be getting a, a better product because people are different, looking at different things. And, um, and that's really what we need here. We, we, we need that second party. We need the Republican Party to have that seat at the table to make sure that the decisions are the best for New Jersey. Well, right, because obviously the legislature represents all of uh, New Jersey residents and businesses, not just um, those that are in the, in the majority. So, um, no, I, I couldn't agree with you more. If I could just comment yes. on that. And by the way, we've been right where the administration has been wrong almost every year. Republican uh, budget revenue estimates have been much better. The administration has been off by like an average of seven bill a year. Uh, they've been horrific at, and I think I said it a couple of years ago, they should just stop making projections because they suck at it. Uh, Republicans have been better consistently and our plans have been uh, much more holistic and reasonable and sustainable and transparent and multi-year. Uh, so they ought to take advantage of that talent pool. Uh, their reputation years from now would be much better if they would include us at the table and our plans, which have proven to be better, more practical, more sustainable every well, year. Well, it'll be great. We'll have you back after the budget is closed um, after you. July 1, and uh, let's see how it all turned out. So Looking thank you both for being here with me today. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.